Welcome to Stupid Money. Not that money is stupid. Most of us would love to have more of it, but sometimes we make stupid decisions with it. You don't have to. This is the show that unpacks how to stop making stupid decisions so you can be smarter with your money and have a happier, fulfilled life. Join us today as we tackle mortgages. Thanks for joining us. I'm Diana and I'm here with John and Vivian. John, tell me one crazy, stupid thing we do with our money. One crazy thing is to buy subscriptions of magazines and never read them, or a repeating online cost that you never know what's going on. Oh, it's out of control. Like my Audible subscription. Turns oh, out I like yeah. books better. Vivian, yeah. yourself? Extended warranties. Those oh. things can be very expensive. Isn't it a good idea though? They can be very expensive and you never use them. And then suppose you get one for an, an appliance and it breaks down and you don't have the extended warranty. Guess what? That service call costs as much as that extended warranty. So, really? Yes, yes. So you end up spending a ton more money. That's right. Every year you're renewing that extended warranty and you don't need it. Don't sounds have to like, Sounds like you've done that. Uh, does it sound <laughs> like that? <laughs> Personal experience, right? So, but surely, Working towards buying my own home is a smart decision. It's a pretty good decision, but it's not always as easy as a person thinks. Mm -hmm. It might not be a good decision. Mm -hmm. There's so much to it uh, that you really got to crunch the numbers in your personal finances so you know where you are, so you can know how to proceed in the future. You're the one to talk to. Let's delve into that. But before we do, let's hit the streets and walk with John while he talks to people about their experience with mortgages. Do you have a mortgage on your home? Yes, I do. Do you think you'll have it paid for by the time you retire? No. I don't have a mortgage. What is your strategy to accomplish that? I, I don't believe in, in borrowing money. And as long as I can avoid it, I don't. Uh, right now, we don't have any mortgage. OK. What, what did you do? What strategy did you use to accomplish that? Uh, we bought a house uh, about 15 years ago. And uh, one of the first priorities we did was to pay off the mortgage. And one of the reasons is we are very conservative uh, investors and uh, we definitely save money instead of saving money in mutual funds or stocks or whatever. No, I don't. Feels pretty good. Yes, it does. How did you accomplish that? Uh, I have a philosophy called either you have the money to do it or you don't do it. If someone came to you and said, we're gonna borrow money to buy a house, what advice would you give them? Well, actually, I'm trying to give myself that advice right now. Um, I'm trying to do my best to live within my means. So if I was to tell somebody else, I would just give them the same advice, live within your means and, and pay for the uh, interest. Well, we can't look at a house as an investment just from the point of money. Um, it's a home, so your children will make memories in it and like the way I made memories in the in the house my grandfather built so there is no we can't attach exactly a financial value to it so it's more than just investment or money so if you like the house and if you're intent to live in it and make a family go for it that was good what stood out to you all oh I, I really love the guy you remember the one guy who he seemed very knowledgeable and he said that a house is not an investment mm, it's a home I really love yeah. that that's it was good. good he also said it's got to be a priority. Yeah. And he said, I've got to have a 15-year mortgage. So they've discussed that somewhere, some way, somehow, to make those decisions. Yeah, he did seem like he was on point. So why don't you begin like unpacking some of that for us? Where do we start with considering a mortgage? 
what you need to do is start shopping around for a mortgage. That means okay. uh, just set a rule for yourself. I'm going to go to five financial institutions. And the financial institution is? That might be a bank, a credit union, online, uh, a mortgage company, okay. because you want to educate yourself as to how to select that organization. Mm -hmm. They might all be the same, but one says, I'll give you uh, uh, no closing cost. You don't have to pay that. Beautiful. Well, that, that might be $2,000. Right. So that's the one you might consider. And uh, you've just got to educate yourself. And, and probably the, one of the best things, you cannot substitute face-to-face -face mm -hmm. meetings with these people. Those Online personal encounters. Good. you got to have mm -hmm. a personal encounter. You can, you can learn and so much more. So shop around, consider different packages mm -hmm. that financial institutions are offering. Mm -hmm. What else? What else can we learn in picking a mortgage? Well, whenever you're starting to look at this topic, you need to see what the interest rate is. Uh, it, it goes up and down. Decide, uh, is it a 30-year mortgage, a 15-year mortgage, a variable rate, which is really dicey. What stage of life am I in? An uh, empty nester or a family with uh, little tiny kids? Can I afford that? Uh, do you have enough money to put down? Uh, you know, it's kind of like buying a car. I got it, but I don't have enough money to put gas in it. That's right. Uh, so you might buy the house, but you can't operate it. Cost uh, to operate a house, and then get a mortgage based on one salary. Why is that? Because if you do it with two, suppose one person loses their job, mm -hmm. then you're in trouble financially. Mm, brilliant. That's a really good point. And then the type of mortgage. You know, there are a lot of different kinds. Type in. Google and say, uh, give me the types of mortgage that are available, and you'll probably get more than you'll know what to do with. That's why you need to talk to that person face to face. And I know you mentioned 15 year mortgage, 30 year mortgage, or seven year mortgage. So, how do we determine which one? By crunching the numbers mm -hmm. in your personal finances, that will help you decide. In a 15 year mortgage, the principal portion of that mortgage payment is much higher. So, you might not be able to afford that payment. So you might say, okay, I'll get a 30-year mortgage even though the, uh, the payment will be less. You can afford it. Okay, John, once again, what about the, the length of the mortgage? I know there are 15, 30, 7-year mortgage. What about that? How do it, you determine which one? It depends on which one you can afford. The payment in a 30-year mortgage is going to be less than a 15-year mortgage. Even though in a 15-year mortgage you're putting more money on the principal, hmm. and which is good, but you might not be able to afford that monthly payment. Right. But if you if you can't afford it then, maybe if you do the 30-year mortgage, one day you may be able to afford it. So even though you're under that 30-year mortgage, you can still make payments as if sure. you're under the 30-year mortgage. Sure, you can add money to the principal. Yes. And speed it up. And, and speed, speed it up. up. Got it. Well, have you all been practicing this in your life? I've been doing it for many, many years. That's how I have built equity in real estate. Most of people's wealth in this country is found in real estate. That's where their wealth is because they are trying to practice these principles of adding uh, money to their principal portion of their house payment. Now, do you have an illustration or a visual that you could show with us? Sure. To here, is, it? here is a 30 year amortization schedule. And you see here's a, a month one through six, and then the next column is the date the payment is due. Then you have the payment, $899. The, the interest is 750 the principal is $149, and the interest rate is 6% on a $150,000 loan. Mm. So when you make that first payment, add another payment of $150, and you've saved yourself $749. Wow, That got shortens it. the payment, and it's like earning 6% interest on that $150. So make a double principal payment every month. So that's the key principle, make a double payment. Yes, and if you can't make that principle, put something on that principle. Just increase it. Because that's building equity and you get it back when you sell. Well, I'll be honest, there's a lot of detail moving parts to this, but I mean, because it comes like second nature to you all, it just comes out just like that. But I'm encouraged by what you originally said and that is start with talking to your financial institutions to establish, right, those moving parts and what the options are for you. And I, I wanna keep going, but before we do, why don't we take a quick break? As a real estate agent, I'm going to share with you some important things to remember when you're getting ready to sell your house, especially as we look at the interior. For instance, having a consistent paint color throughout and trim colors are a good idea, as well as remembering that rooms should always look like they're being used for 
close to the designated purpose. For instance, as we walk in, are we in the foyer or are we in the garage? You might want to stow this in the garage instead. Let's take a minute and go through. For instance, in this home, the owner has painted all the walls the same color, the trim is the same color, and that's a great start. But as we go into the rooms, you get a little clutter going on here. You want rooms to appear as clutter-free and spacious as possible. So remove these items on the shelf. It'll look better that way. And remember, the way you live in a house and show a house are two different things. Don't forget to pick up after yourself. Maybe stick away the comfy blankets and magazines for a while. Put a, pick up after the pets and the kids. Minor repairs are important. If a buyer sees this loose faucet, he may think there's other things that haven't been taken care of. Take a minute to go through the house and check for cracks in the floor, cracks on the wall. They can be easily fixed, doesn't cost much, but can make a difference. It may not sound like much, but these minor things can make a big difference for you in your overall marketing time and the value you receive. Thanks for joining us on today's Money Hack. We've talked about a lot of things today in this episode on mortgages. It can be pretty complex. In today's segment of Stewardship for Dummies is another example of someone who doesn't quite understand. Let's watch. Grandpa, did I see you at the bank yesterday? Yeah, Grandma and you are thinking about getting a reverse mortgage or taking out a loan on the old homestead. You know, our 50th anniversary's coming up. Well, <laughs> happy anniversary. Thank you, Sonny. I want to take Grandma to Hawaii. Oh, that's a nice anniversary gift. Yeah, that's why we're thinking of getting a loan or a reverse mortgage. Do you know much about a reverse mortgage? Yes, I'm not I hear. It's a loan you don't have to pay back until you die. Well, you know you have to pay the taxes and keep the house up in good repair. That sounds fair. Using the loan company needs money to pay the taxes and paint the house. I can go along with that, Sonny. So how much do you think I can get? Well, I guess that depends on what it's worth. It's worth a lot to Grandma and me. Yeah, I understand that, but the FHA, they're gonna want to uh, determine what your home is worth. I could save them a lot of time. How's that? All they gotta do is ask me what it's worth. One of the first things they're gonna wanna know is how big your house is. It's big enough for grandma and me to live in. Yeah, but they're gonna wanna know how many actual square feet are in the house. There's no square feet. I wear a nine and a half. Grandma wears a 15 and a half. Well, don't you tell her I said that. <laughs> Have you ever called her Bigfoot? Okay, mum's the word. But the loan company's gonna wanna know uh, how much land the house sets on. Land? Our house doesn't set on land. What do you mean? It's a houseboat. Our interview today is from Eastern Washington with a fun-loving couple named Dave and Rosa. They have some good things to say on mortgages. Thanks for joining us from Walla Walla, Washington. We're here with Dave and Rosa Gillum. How are you doing up there? Really good, thank you. It's a great day up here. Welcome to Stupid Money and Things People Do With It. We're talking about mortgages in our show today. Can you guys tell me about your first mortgage? Sure. We moved to uh, Western Washington after serving in Montana for four years in a rental and we realized very soon that that was not what we wanted to continue. And uh, we found a nice little home in Chehalis, Washington. And uh, there was only one problem, we didn't have money to buy it, but we wanted to buy it. <laughs> so how did you go about doing that? If you didn't have any money to buy it, how, what did you do? We were very fortunate to have a good employer, the Washington Conference, and they loaned us the down payment for the money. Okay, so uh, were both of you working during that time? No, I had decided that I was not going to work because I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and raise our children 
without needing babysitters. So you decided not to work because if you had two incomes, when the kids came along, you would have a financial adjustment. That's right, yeah. I, I just knew that I didn't want to have to be forced to work for a certain lifestyle. My kids were more important to us than that. So you lived very, very frugal. <laughs> yes, we did, and I uh, encouraged my wife to go to work when we first got married, and she looked at me and she says, no, I'm not going to work, and I was very puzzled, nonplussed about it, and I asked her why, and that's when she told me the reason, and I really highly respected that, and later on I was very glad that, that uh, we had made that choice together. So that meant that there was no eating out at restaurants, and we preserved every bit of food that we could preserve to have at as low a cost as we could so that we could meet our goals. Living that frugal on one income, did you feel like you were missing out on anything? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't think so because to do this, I feel like a husband and wife have to be together on what goals you're meeting. Mm -hmm. And so we had lots of friends, we could go and do things, but we just chose to do things that didn't cost money. We still had lots of fun. Okay, how about this question? Did you ever try to do additional payments on the principal? Well, what happened when we def uh, finally decided to get the house, we, we were paying a double payment when we bought this little home in town we had to pay the conference back with, by the end of the year, which uh, took every bit of excess cash we had past the payment. And once we got that paid off to the conference, then we had a little bit of extra cushion. And uh, we, I had a revelation one day uh, that really was, uh, I guess I could say it just blew my mind because uh, I, I started realizing the value of compounding. So you uh, consistently made additional payments to your principal. What happened, it was a rainy day, uh, I think it was in January, in the middle of the winter, there was really not much I could do outside. So I sat down with my little Texas calculator, the latest technology of the day. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what if I took that money I was paying to the conference to pay back the down payment and if I applied that on the principle of the loan. <clears throat> and so I actually took the, the uh, balance of the loan and I added the additional payment and uh, multiplied, computed the interest, <clears throat> excuse me, and divided it by 12 and I was subtracted. And I did that, I had lots of time, by the way, <laughs> that day. And after several sheets of uh, the old yellow legal tablets, uh, subtracting month by month, I looked at how many months it took, and it was less than five years, and my mortgage was completely paid off from a 30-year down to a four-point-some years, saving something like $50,000. It really was revolutionary. Uh, now, if you'd had a computer, you could have done all that on computer, but you did that amortization schedule longhand? That is correct. With a, with a little calculator. That is correct. Early on, you made a decision to try to not have any mortgages, and you worked toward that end. And that was probably an early home, but you probably had some other homes, and did you repeat that process? Fortunately, the Lord blessed. Uh, he, I think the blessings are in, in His plan, His, His plan of stewardship. He doesn't want us to be enslaved to the credit card companies. He doesn't want us to be enslaved to the banks all our lives. And so we decided to get on the positive side of the curve instead of, instead of us always paying interest to the credit card and to the bank, we decided that we would have that money. And so once we paid our loans off, we started putting money aside. And so when we, it came time to buy a car, we had the cash. One thing that I think was very important to us too is that you make money when you buy something, not when you sell it. And so we always looked for something that we could enhance physically in the property and do some little changes that would increase its value when we sold it. What's the crazy, have you ever done something really crazy 
with your money that, well, well that was a learning experience. <laughs> well, one thing that we did that I could not stomach, uh, and that we started investing uh, in mutuals and in the stock market and things like that. And uh, that was really hard for me because I felt so out of control. I know other people have done very well in those areas and they have the stomach for it, but it was really tough for me to watch my money drop by 10, 20, 30 percent. And of course they say if you're patient, it'll come back up and it, and it always has. But I don't know if that you would call that crazy, but it was just a, it was a challenge for me because I like to, I like to watch the pennies and it's really hard to see uh, that value dropping. We read a book also called The Richest Man in Babylon. It teaches you to watch your chickens and not to let them get away, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we felt like with a homeowner owning a home, why we could kind of control that chicken. <laughs> Would you do it again? Absolutely. We have had a wonderful life. Uh, we have good friendships, good relationships. Uh, our lives together have, is, have been full of service. We've done the mission, mission field experience for many years overseas, uh, in Japan and uh, the South Pacific. Uh, the Lord has just blessed in amazing ways. And I think a lot of young people I see, they get in the the uh, mistaken belief that they have to have things now. And so they get the credit cards out. And of course the credit cards are much, much more dangerous than any home mortgage because the uh, interest rates are 20 to 25% or so on those. And they can really get themselves in trouble fast. And we decided a long time ago, our first couple of years of marriage, that we would pay our credit cards off every month at the end of the month and that we would just not waste money on interest. And so yes, we would do it all over. Right now, after being married 40 plus years, we have the financial security that uh, we did not have then, but over the years, that money compounds, that money starts growing, and that money actually goes into your pocket and it, goes in, it allows you to be more generous with your, your uh, charities, uh, we have several charities that we really like to support and we have the resources that it, that it's really fun to support now. Last question. If you could sell, tell our audience one thing, what advice would you give them on mortgages? Take as little mortgage as you can. I remember our second house that we uh, decided that we were going to build it as we could pay month by month. We actually, because it was summertime, we've done crazy things, like we lived in a tent for a couple of months. We had no place to live while we built the structure, the outside uh, foundation, um, and we would pay, we would build on it as we had the money for that month. Got to push in the limit, wasn't it? It is, but you know, <laughs> Risk that that risk was worth taking, and it wasn't long till we had a roof over our heads, and um, and it was fun. The kids thought we were living in a park. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that so many times in life, it's your attitude that you approach it with. Is it an adventure? Is it fun? Or is it gruesome and hard? And so I think the optimism, you know, and then working together as a couple on a goal. Um, is so essential that you have to be on the same page. Not everybody can handle the same thing, but um, mortgages, yes, pay off as quickly as you can. Good advice, good advice. Thank you so much, Dave and Rosa. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> Thank you, God bless. Take care. That was a really interesting interview, John. What stood out to you? Oh, it was amazing that they were willing to live in a tent for a few months in order Serious. to achieve their financial goals. They bought into the concept very, very early. This is what we're going to do. And now they're really enjoying the fruit of that. Yeah, I thought they were a beautiful illustration yeah. of the earlier conversations we were having yeah. on this topic. Vivian, I did think of something, though. Mm -hmm. What about refinancing? Well, refinancing, you have to be very careful. Number one, don't do it unless it's a difference of two percentage points. Okay. Number two, if you're going to do it, the money that you're saving, 
you need to put that on your principal. Do not use that money for a credit card debt. Mm -hmm. Go, take a trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Just don't use it for those reasons. The reason you're doing it is so that you can lower your money, your, your principal. And the next thing is to be very careful because there are some hidden fees in these refinancing. Right on. So be very, very careful. So to sum it up, in a nutshell, it just all depends. Is there any takeaways, John, on here's mortgages? The, here's the takeaway. All of this information, we're just barely scratching the surface. Here's what you want to have in mind. Have a plan to have your home paid for by retirement. That's the goal. That's the goal. So all these different moving parts are designed to reach that goal. So you, when you get your golden years, you can actually enjoy them. Enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I know that for people that are a little like me, I'm a little overwhelmed with all the moving parts, the, just the surface that you cover and there's so much more. But I want to hit on what you had said earlier and that is there's resources at our disposal. Mm -hmm. Hit up the financial institutions, correct? Mm -hmm. So our banks, our credit unions, our mortgage institutions. And don't forget we have the internet. You can keep researching and connecting to the right resource. I hope you found this super practical as I have. Join us again on Stupid Money.